Hi, my name is Victoria and I'm a thyroid cancer survivor. We're here at the Thyca Thyroid Cancer Survivors Association Conference in Denver, Colorado. I'm with Dr. Eric Mitra. Dr. Mitra, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. We're going to be talking about pre-therapy imaging and how it relates to dosimetry um, in radioactive iodine. Can you please tell us about yourself? Sure. Uh, my name is Eric Mitra. I'm a nuclear medicine physician. I work at Oregon Health and Science University in Portland, Oregon, and I've been in this field for approximately 10 years now. Great. Well, thank you so much for being here. Yes. So with respect to radioactive iodine and pre-therapy imaging, can you brief briefly walk us through what that means? What is pre-therapy imaging? Right. So it's actually a rather broad term, uh, but generally speaking, what most people are talking about when they mention pre-therapy imaging is radioiodine scans. Uh, so those can be done with either iodine-123 or iodine-131, and the idea is to see the distribution of disease within the body, the whole body, so it's also called a whole body scan, um, and then to use that information to guide the subsequent therapy with iodine-131. So then how does pre-therapy imaging come into play with respect to the dosimetry of the radioactive iodine? So uh, in two ways I could answer that question. So one is uh, the simple way, which is again that based on the distribution of the disease uh, that you see on the whole body scan, you might adjust a little bit what the predicted dose would be. Typically for most patients, we already have a good idea of what, what range we should use, but that scan might give us a little bit of additional information. Uh, but the more um, significant way to, that people talk about dosimetry is to actually do multiple scans over multiple days and to calculate a specific radiation dose uh, to that specific person. That is called uh, pre-therapy dosimetry. That's not always done, but it's, uh, it's used in some institutions to really hone in the specific dose, typically for patients with more extensive disease. I see. Yeah. So if I'm a patient and I'm about to undergo a radioactive iodine ablation, should I be asking for this or will my physician, just my nuclear medicine physician, just know that this is something that yeah. is an option? I think it's a, it's a reasonable thing to ask, uh, just to understand, you know, what are the practices that that particular uh, hospital or that particular physician is doing. I will say that, that this is one area that's a little bit controversial in the field okay. because there isn't a lot of very strong data one way or the other. So some places very rigor rigorously do pre-therapy imaging for all their patients uh, and other places never do it. And I've actually been in both types of institutions have experienced that a little bit, and I can tell you that both sides are, are valid. So it's good, I think, for patients to understand what it is that they're going to go through and why uh, you know, the reasoning is behind that so that they feel comfortable, but also to understand that you know, either strategy is potentially reasonable. Okay, that's yeah. good to know. So is it more often than that at a center of excellence, perhaps, that, th that this is used more frequently, or? Um, I would say that's uh, that's also variable, again, okay. because the data doesn't necessarily strongly support one way or the other. Some centers of excellence, you know, with very uh, experienced physicians have chosen not, not to do them routinely because they use other types of imaging um, to guide their therapy and not necessarily the radioiodine scan. And other places you'll talk to, you know, very strongly feel that that needs to be done. So, no, I don't think it really is guided by the center of excellence. It's more the particular practice pattern of that hospital and that physician. Okay, got it. Yeah. Is there anything else that you think patients should know about pre-therapy imaging? No, again, just to reiterate that uh, it's a very broad topic. It, it can include um, other types of imaging, such as ultrasound and CT scans and, and even um, FDG PET scans. Um, but, you know, really to, the focus is typically radio iodine scans. And secondly, again, to reiterate that, you know, this is a, this is a variable area, so not to, not to worry too much about, about what it is. Sounds great. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here with us today, Thank Dr. Mitra. Thank you for Mitra. having me.